it's so small. Never a good thing to hear as a man. Always a good thing to hear as an engineer. Because the smaller we can make things, the better off people like it. Hey, what's happening guys? Today we are examining the world of small. Yeah, we start here with the biggest board, the Uno. Then there's a uh, ESP32 Nano Pro Micro. That's that beetle thing. But we're going even smaller today. So these guys can all GTFO and we're bringing in this guy. This is the Particle Photon. And this is from a Spark IO. This is a very interesting little Wi-Fi connected board. Let's uh, zoom in and take a look at this. Anytime we can zoom in, there we go. So it's small. I mean, if we take a look at it side by side with the Pro Micro, it's a little bit wider, but uh, in general, they're the same size. So it's small, but it has some really unique features. But first of all, let's just hit on an overview of it. It's an STM32 board, 120 megahertz ARM core. M3. Uh, it uses the Broadcom 43362 Wi Fi chip. Has one megabyte of flash, 128K regular RAM, uh, 802.11bg, and it uses 3.3 volt logic, 18 GPIOs, 6 analog, and it has two built in DACs, digital to analog converters. Always nice. You can do a lot of fun stuff with that. SPI, I squared C, CAN bus. And you can see it has two switches, one for setup and one for reset. There's also a uh, LED there on D7 and an RGB LED that shows the status of it there. It has a built-in ceramic Wi-Fi antenna and a uh, port for a separate external antenna uses the micro USB and there is a uh, nothing on the bottom so very cool but we haven't gotten to the coolest part yet the coolest part is this board does not have to be pro plugged into your computer via y uh, USB in order to be programmed you can program it through a uh, smartphone app you can program it through a downloadable local IDE. You can program it through the web IDE. And once your programming is ready, you can update it OTA over the air via the Wi-Fi, never having to be plugged into the computer. So if you're a guy or a gal who designs applications that needed to be updated a lot, or say you're working in the field, I don't know, say you build uh, drag bikes, and you need to update some stuff at the track. Well then, something like this might be right up your alley where you can update your app, or up, yeah, update your app from your smartphone, OTA it directly to the board. Pretty cool. Um, let's take a look at Particle's website and some of the unique features and requirements in setting it up. All right, we are on the docs.particle.io website, which tells you about getting started and how to connect your photon. They have a little video here that shows you, makes it pretty easy, taking you all the way up to how to blink an LED and how fast you want to blink it. If you don't want to do it from your phone, which I personally didn't, you can do it from the computer um, 
there's all this installing command line interface and all that, but none of it's really all that necessary. They have a simple script you follow, and it's pretty easy. Once you're connected, you can come over to the web IDE, that's build.particle.io. And if you come down here to the little brackets here, that brings you to the code window. And you can come down here and we can get started with our basic blink and LED script, which is pretty simple. A lot of commenting here just telling you what's going on. And what's nice is if you look down here at the bottom of the screen, it gives you information about your board. For instance, it says last event status is offline. My board is called Learn Electronics, and there's a firmware version and all of that. Okay? So watch what happens when I plug it in. Now this is going to take two or three seconds to come to life. Okay, so now it just came to life. And if we look down here, you can see last event, device reset, power down. And you can also see it has the blue light here, which is telling us that it's online and ready to go. So to, to send your code to the particle IO, all you need to do is click the lightning bolt here and flash it. But uh, let's see if we can't make a little change here. And as you notice, this code is exactly the same as the Arduino code. So let's change our uh, delay here to a half a second. Ah, fork it, eh? Okay, did that work? There we go. So now we've uh, changed our delay to a half a second. I'll click the flash button. And if we pay attention down here, we'll be able to see what's happening. Right now it says it's flashing the code. And the lights on the particle I.O. are cyan, which you see here. So we'll see what happens here in a few seconds. Okay, last, it says ready now. You can see here ready. And last event to the device. So let's go over to the device and check it out. Now, if you were watching the code, you saw it's going to flash two LEDs. It's going to flash the LED connected to D7 here, and it's going to connect, or it's going to flash an LED connected to D0. So I've connected a red LED with a 220 ohm resistor to ground, and then I've run a line from the ground rail back to the ground pin. And I'm going to plug this in using this cable. But I want you to see here. We zoom up, see this cable? It's just connected to a, uh, a USB charger plugged into a power strip. It is not connected to a computer. This thing has yet to be connected to a computer. And we plug her in. The green means it's not connected to the cloud. The cyan means it's connected to the cloud. And we've got our blink. Now, just to show you that I am controlling this, I'm going to change the delay one more time. This time to 100 milliseconds. I'm flashing the code right now. And you can see the lights have changed. And it should be ready here in a second. 
there you go. We've changed the speed once again. So totally amazing to be able to do this OTA. Now I know you can do OTA with ESP8266 and ESP32, but this was designed from the ground up to do it. It has the firmware. I mean, it's just, it's built for this and it's so convenient. Let's try something else. Okay, let's go back to our code window. And this time, let's uh, let's do a web-connected LED. And you can see most of the code up through here is all the same. But we are creating something new here, the particle function. We have an LED toggle, which is a string command. It's telling us what's going to happen. So let's update this code to the particle. And I think we're updated. Yep, device flash successful. Your device is being updated. And it should be ready to go. All we need to do now is find out the address of the device. Okay, guys, we're ready, and keep your eye on the LED. And it's on, off, on, off. It's amazing. This is a really cool little device. Now, this is just a first look into it. So I haven't explored or learned all of the possibilities. This device, um, I'll post a link to it down below. I got it off of Amazon. It costs $19. Yeah, it's more pricey than an ESP32 or an ESP8266. But I think it has a lot more possibilities. So I hope you guys enjoyed this. If you did, give me a thumbs up. Feel free to comment, share. Don't forget to subscribe. Thanks to all my patrons. That's it. I'm out. Peace. Oh.